Hello there. Okay, so I was um, messing around with Anna 2. I did some of the Synthwave presets for the Synthwave pack that they released recently. And I was just messing around with a, a little, I don't know, it's not really a loop that I was, uh, I was creating. Um, and I wanted to go through what I've done because uh, I did have, when I did the demo for the preset pack, I'm waffling now. When I did the demo, a couple of people asked me if they could um, have a copy of the uh, the Ableton file, which obviously I can't do. Now, um, in fact, let's just listen to it first so you can hear what we're going to have, have a look at. There's some vocals in here as well that I just grabbed from one of the sample packs I've got. I'm not entirely convinced it works, but it's all I've got. So let's have a listen. Well, let's start from the beginning. get the idea there so it's relatively simple um, let's start with a drum rack now I've got some samples from one of the Ableton packs if you've got sweet I don't think you can get it with just standard live uh, it's called the drum machines pack and it is free and there's quite a lot of old drum machines in here in the sample section and it was something like a 707 kick yeah something like that and then what have I got snare 707 snare as well and then using an 808 closed hi-hat and an 808 maraca. So looking at the MIDI, this is pretty much all there is. Kick, snare, and then some percussion. So I, I kept the drums very simple for this little demo. In terms of processing, the kick has got a little bit of compression. Actually, relatively high amount of compression and I've just EQ'd out a little bit of bottom end, boosted it probably around 50 is that? 33 and then I've taken out some around 100 because it can get a little bit boomy there so so without and with so it's not doing a great deal uh, the snare's got more processing on it so I could have done the, the gated reverb the old fashioned way but the gated reverb preset or the gated snare preset in Valhalla Vintage Verb, is very, very good. So uh, I might as well use that. And then we've just compressed the snare a little bit and EQ'd it out, quite a lot of bottom end taken out, and then boosted it just above 100, uh, 167. I mean, quite often you boost the snare around 200, but I felt this was better. And then just taking a little bit of the mids out. Uh, so without, <laughs> without the verb, it's quite, whoops, quite puny. And that's with all the processing of. And then the percussion, I didn't do anything with. There's no processing on that at all. Just panned left and right a little bit. And then on the drum rack channel itself, I've got some glue compression. Uh, it's been compressed quite hard. just congeals it all together nicely. So the bass channel, now what I've done here, I'm just gonna, I've grouped all my processing together, or most of it, so we can turn it all on, on and off. Um, I've used the Poly 6 bass preset that I created for the Synthwave pack, and it's supposed to be recreating, obviously, the Poly 6 bass preset that you get in the plugin and the hardware itself. It's used tons and tons in Synthwave. So just listen to it by itself. Let's try that again. Now quite often, so I'm drinking coffee, quite often this bass preset will be, you'll have the filter envelope set so that it's a little bit pluckier. More like that. But when I tried that in this track, um, I knew I was going to be using LFO tool to duck the bass line a little bit. 
um, I felt that the slightly longer decay worked better. So in terms of effects, I've taken out some of the bottom end and some of the kind of low mids just to tighten the bass up a bit. I did toy with the idea of taking even more of the bass out, even more of the low end, but I didn't think it worked. So that's without the EQ. So it just tightens it up a bit. And obviously LFO tool does its thing. And the last thing I did was listen to what happens when I switch Saturn on. So I haven't done a lot of processing with Saturn. What I tend to do with bass lines with Saturn is just set up some crossover points. Now this one here that's between 230 and 1250, it's slightly boosted and it's slightly driven just to add a little bit more dirt in the mids. But it is subtle. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a cough at the moment. So that's the bass channel. And then I've got this lead, which is affected quite heavily, actually. So let's turn all the processing off. So the lead itself is another one of the ones I made called To Jupiter. And it's obviously... It's obviously designed to sound like an old Roland Juno or Jupiter. So I've taken off the internal reverb because I'm using the Valhalla Vintage Verb on a lot of the other channels um, for the sake of cohesiveness. I use that on the, the lead as well. So in terms of processing, let me just switch all these off because I've done quite a lot here. So let's switch Vintage Verb on. It's the same. Uh, I'm using long, long synth hall in all of the channels just so that we get some kind of cohesiveness. So that makes it dreamy for a start. And then I've added echo melt. Now, the, the secret thing about echo melt, it's not really a secret, is this melt section, which attempts to recreate a kind of a wow and flutter and drift that you find in old recordings. Uh, the chorus is very nice as well. So all I've done, oh, and there's a saturation section. All I've done is I've chosen a preset called Broken Toys. I've mixed it in a little bit and I've tweaked some of these settings. But just have a listen to what it does to the lead sound as I bring it in and out. So it's adding a tasty bit of chorus and a, a bit of drift. And then I've compressed these two together. So I'm EQing out the bottom end and taking out a little notch here because it was quite nasal. And then I'm using Pro-Q2 again. Uh, the reason I'm using a second EQ is that I find it easier to find and reduce resonant peaks with Pro Q2, it's just a little bit easier to use. And this is a quite a little GUI here. I know you can make it bigger, but I still don't think it works as well as Pro Q2. So these two little notches here are to take even more of that kind of 2K nasal area out. So I'm gonna switch all of the processing on and off. It doesn't change the character of the lead sound, the original lead sound. It's just uh, pixie dust. That's the, that's the phrase I'm going to use. So switching it off. So a nice big layer of effects. Bell and pluck we're going to come back to later because these are more recent additions and I've only got them set up in arrangement view here. Uh, pad. So I've used... Uh, I think this is one of mine as well. OB pad, did I make this? I think I did. It's a very simple pad sound. And all I've done is I've EQ'd out the bottom end and fiddled with it a bit. And then LFO, LFO tooled it. I'm just going to push the bass on for context. <coughs> so EQ off. again. 
So the EQ in solo, you could argue that it sounds better without the EQ, but obviously I'm doing this EQ to fit into the mix and it sounds quite, um, it's quite imposing when you turn the EQ off in the mix. In fact, let's just do it. Just too forward without that EQ, it's too forward in the mix, uh, in my opinion. So, finally, the vocal well, not finally, we'll come back to these two channels in a minute. Uh, vocals, in some, in some respects, I think that the more effects you add to vocals, the better, but obviously, you can go too far. So, let's listen to it by itself. Um, obviously, I've taken up a lot of the bottom end. Thought you knew all that there was to know Thought you'd landed the fire. And then the first effect I've added is ping pong, which is I just adore this plugin. Thought you knew all that there was And then I'm using the same know. synth reverb as on the synth channels. Um, again, all I'm really doing is adjusting the mix the and decay levels. Right, let's turn the Valhalla Vintage Verb on. You knew all that a nice bit of space there. And I'm using this free Luftikus reverb plugin. Um, it's free, but it's got a very, very good air band. So have a listen to the top end. So pay close attention to the top end as I switch this on. Really very good. And then I'm using a bit of surgical reduction here. So this is a kind of honky nasal area. Uh, nasal is really more 2K, but this is like a really, I don't know, hot, hot. That's where all that hot, hot sound comes from. That is a technical term, by the way. Come on, play again. Thought you knew all that there was to so that up a little bit, and then I've compressed it. Quite a lot, actually. Okay, let's switch back to session view. So, so this lead and the vocal, I don't have playing at the same time. It's just because I was showing you things in a, um, session view. So coming into the arrangement I've done, it's very, very simple. I haven't really arranged it at all. It's just a couple of sections repeated. Um, this kind of, it's not really a chorus verse section, but that's what we're going to call it. And then this section here, we're going to call the bridge. So the first um, chorus and verse section. The second one, when it repeats the second time round, I've chosen a pluck that again I believe is one of mine. Sequence my belt. Yeah, I think I is that one of mine? Yeah, I think it's one of mine. Um so I've added this one in. And quite simply, quite simply, I've left the ping pong on and the chorus on in Anna. Uh I've EQ'd it a little bit. Let's just group all these together. So this is without the effect. So you can hear a little bit of ping pong delay in the plugin itself. And then I've EQ'd it, tidied that up a bit, and then added Ableton, ping pong. And then the same old vintage verb. So because it's a, a plucky, repetitive sound, I've kept the decay time on the reverb quite low. It would just get really busy otherwise. So playing it all together, So add something, add a little bit more interest in there. So adds a little bit of extra interest. So this first bridge section, we've got the lead. And then the second one, I've layered it in with a bell, which is... Yeah, that's another one of mine. So again, I've left the chorus and uh, ping pong on in the plugin. 
let me just group these effects up again. Let's just switch these off. Okay. So, let's listen to this. And then good old Valhalla Vintage Verb, same, same one. Quite a long decay time this time. And EQ'd at the bottom end. Uh, same Pro Q2 kind of deal. I'm, I'm taking out some of the resonant peaks. And then LFO tooling it. And that's being layered with the lead sound. And what I've also done is in the first bridge, I know they're not really bridges, but that's what I'm calling it. Uh, in the first bridge, I have got the lead centered. Uh, come on, find the right one. Yeah, so I've got the lead centered. This is uh, no panning. And then when we're laying it with a bell, I've actually panned the lead left slightly and the bell is panned right slightly. So they're not, you know, smothering each other too much. So that's what I've done so far. Uh, I may or may not do anything with this. It was just something fun that I was doing. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave you with the whole thing playing out. So I hope you found this video useful. And I'll try and do more of these soon. Cheers. Thought you